All right, guys, great to have you here today. Today, we're talking to Bear from Service Autopilot. We're talking about sales, and we're talking about some of the different things around his role in Service Autopilot. Stick around to catch the whole show. Guys, before we get into this, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more relevant information coming soon. So Bear, let's get right into this. Tell me tell me a little bit, you know, before we even tell a little bit about your role, uh, introduce yourself. Say, let's just hear something here. Well, um, my name is Bear. I work for Service Autopilot, and uh, I have the pleasure of being a, a co-host on the Profit Roadmap podcast uh, that's sponsored by us and it's it's our company podcast it's not even sponsored by us it's it is but it isn't <laughs> you know it's it's ours uh and then i also work in the sales department mm -hmm. um you know i i just uh, i just got promoted to uh to senior uh um to, uh at you know senior ae so it's a it's a it's a it's a new role within sales where i'll be responsible for uh just doing more hands-on demonstration of the product for potential members yeah. getting them to you know understand how they the benefits of their business and it's it's really, it's a really great opportunity for me to really dive in with prospective members um, and find out the problems that they're having in their business and how we could potentially solve them. Mm -hmm. um, and when I say potentially, that means we not we we may not we may not be able to solve them. Yeah. And you know what? I think that kind of goes into what we're talking about today. Yeah, yeah. You I mean you did bring up a great thing about you can't put a round peg in a square hole. There's not one silver bullet, not a, not a fix all. And, and, and in sales, you know, it's really, you know, you, you're, you're, I'm very sales focused. It's something I love as well. It's probably one of the things I enjoy most about business. And, um, you know, it's truly important to find out, you know, how, what kind of service a person needs, what, what problem you're fixing and for them and making sure you can correctly do that, not try to scam them off on it, just, just throw it everywhere, you know? Right, I think, I think inherently the, the, if you have an enthusiasm for sales or for business, or if you're trying to grow a business in general, I think the, the I think we've, you've run into this, I know I've run into this, I think anyone that has, has been in any kind of sales or, or trying to grow any type of business, you run into the problem of being over enthusiastic. Of course, you're passionate about what you're doing. Yeah, it's your passion. It's your business. It's your. In my case, it's my role. I've never had the uh, the opportunity of owning my own business, but um, I'm very passionate about what I do. Mm -hmm. And so, enthusiasm is great. It's yeah. infectious, but sometimes it can get the best of you. And so, the idea that we really hone in on is you can't always fix a square peg in a round hole. There isn't a silver bullet, like you said. It's important to know, though, that no solution is perfect. Mm -hmm. Your business is not perfect. Uh, you have you have gaps in your business. 100%. And there are, you know, there are gaps in solutions as well. And so, is, but as long as you're transparent with your customer, mm -hmm. then, then it's okay. It yes. really, it really is. It's as simple as that. They may sound oversimplistic, but it's as simple as that. If you can be completely transparent with who you're talking to, then it's it makes complete sense. So just to paint relevancy on what we're talking about today, you're you if you're offering a service to a customer and a customer asks a specific question about that service that you do not address, yes, and it's let's just put a line in the sand. It's a it's a hard no. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta stay with the hard no. Yeah. You don't do it, and because if you make the exception there, or if you even waffle just a little bit, mm -hmm. then that's all it's always ever going to be. It's going to be exception after exception after exception. It's going to be problem after problem after problem. And I got to tell you, one of the biggest problems I came from insurance sales. I did, I did, I managed an agency, managed a sales team in insurance sales for ten years. Mm -hmm. And the single biggest problem that I encountered was the fact that not only did I outsell everybody else on my team, yeah. not only did I have to sell everything, but I was also managing every person I ever sold. So I was selling, I was selling, and if I promised something, I had, had to, to deliver. Sure. I had to make sure that it was delivered every single time. Whereas, and it, as you grow your business, that's not scalable. That's not scalable on a sales rep level. Mm -hmm. How the heck can that be scalable on a business level? Yeah. If you're touching every single thing. So 
the important thing is to be not only realistic, but also transparent. And so when you're transparent with your, with your, with your prospects, it just, it goes a long way. And that's where we kind of go with service autopilot. When I'm talking to potential business owners about how service autopilot can solve problems for them, I have no problem telling them when service autopilot isn't able to do something. I also have no problem telling them that there, that, that there's a workaround, yes. but they need to understand that it is not ideal. It is not straightforward. There is a process involved mm -hmm. and I explain it to them as best as possible so that they understand that, you know, there, again, there's not a magic button. There's a couple of magic buttons to get to where they need get to go. Get them in the sequence. And then you can, you can go from there. But, uh, I think the, um, I think the important thing, um, kind of all the way down boils down to just simply empathy. Um, your customers have a genuine problem and when they have a genuine problem that you can provide a solution for without shooting yourself in the foot. Yes. It's, <clears throat> it makes for the best experience possible. So, um, not everybody's a fit. Yeah. And I like, I, I like, I like that, that premise. I like the, what you're saying, making sure you, you keep that, that hard no, if there's something in there that you can't provide that, trying to make an exception just to get that sale, that's, it, it just leads you down a, a bad road, you know, it, that, that's gonna, your first bump is just gonna lead to 20 more bumps down the road, and that's never a good ending, and you know, something that I'm sure you'd agree with that I always do that kind of goes right in line with that is uh, just over-educate them about, I wanna hit them with all the problems. Uh, you know the things that work even around that situation you know any other things that may come up that might not be good I like being very upfront about that you know as much as possible so they know a hundred percent what they're getting into pretty much uh, uh, the same thing you said with even more uh, little pieces little little tidbits just to know so they know I'm authentic mm -hmm. I'm not holding anything back I'm telling you here's a B and C um, you might not even have this, but this could happen to you. And I want you to know those are some of the worst case scenarios, just so you, you're educated about what we're doing here. I think education is key in anything that you're doing because when you educate the customer, I think and, and it's inherently something that so many people are afraid of, business owners uh, alike. And I think it all ha it boils down to simple pride. You know, there's a, you know, people, there's so much pride for, for business owners specifically because listen, it takes incredible confidence, incredible confidence and ability to start, run and be successful in business. Mm -hmm. So when you've actually hit that point, giving up any of that power, any of that responsibility, it's hard. It's a challenge. It's hard. It, and, and, and I think that that was probably one of the best things and first things that I learned when I was talking to small business owners before I talked to literally thousands of them was that was one of the quickest lessons I learned is just acknowledging the success that they've had and acknowledging just how hard they've worked to get to where they're at. And we were talking about this yesterday in a, in a very candid conversation with about just owning you know, owning expectations and acknowledging a problem. So to give you an example, what we were talking about yesterday was, um, you know, we were talking about pricing, right? Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you know, everyone, when you're selling anything, candy bars, landscape, software, or in my case, my fun job, a cigar, yeah, price is gonna come up. At yeah. some point with somebody, price will come up. Uh, and the inevitable question is, what am I paying for? Mm -hmm. Or why am I paying for that? Or why, or, or if someone will try to negotiate with you. Again, kind of what we were talking about a second ago. First of all, you need to stand firm on whatever, whatever the scenario calls for. You need to stand firm. But also accept responsibility for it. Yeah. Yeah, you may not, in your case, you're the business owner, so you dictated the pricing. But in my case, I'm not. I didn't dictate the pricing. But still, I need to take ownership of that. Mm -hmm. And here's how I do that. Because it's, I'm acknowledging that there, there's a pain still there, but I'm also acknowledging the problem, which is still with me. Yes. And my problem is, and this is exactly what I've, I've said, and this is exactly what I'll continue to say. You know what? I understand where you're coming from. It is extra money. It is more money than you're probably considering spending. And I want to apologize to you because clearly I didn't do a good job of explaining the value to you. And... 
you can turn that around on any product mm -hmm. because there is value in what you offer. And when you off and when it's sold correctly and presented in, 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 in correct fashion, that the truly, and this sounds obnoxious, right? Mm -hmm. But the price doesn't matter. I I can't agree with you more. You know, the price is irrelevant, especially, you know, maybe some people are extremely price sensitive and, and it's always gonna like you're gonna have issues, but but nine times out of 10, it's completely irrelevant. It's 100% about the value. And it's such a good spin on it to, to put that somewhere I've dropped the ball there. If, if you were not, we, I haven't showed you enough for you to see yeah. what this is and why this is, this is, this is actually probably a better price. I feel like this is totally affordable, maybe even too low price for all the benefits you're gonna get out of this. Cause I mean, I, I mean this, this lesson goes back to all the way down back to my insurance days. And I could never for the life of me understand when I have a customer who's trying to get insurance on, I'm not kidding you, a Maserati, Ferrari, Cadillac. I mean, just like these obnoxiously priced items, you're thinking to yourself, like, well, and then I see, I'm even judging in my comments there, obnoxious. It, it's, you know what, he, the person I was talking to, and I remember this very quickly, very clearly, that this was probably the moment, this might actually be a light bulb moment of when I actually learned this lesson. And that was the fact that I assumed that I knew where he was coming from. So he was giving me a really hard time on a very reasonably priced policy. And I knew that from the assets that he was trying to protect that, oh, well, he's got the money, what does it matter? Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, is that I didn't understand the situation. And the understand the situation was that he was trying to get by because he had been successful at one time, but he had hit some rough patch. And these were assets that, you know, this was during the crash. He couldn't move them. He couldn't move he them. Because he just lost. Because it was just, I mean, it was just an absolute loss for him. And so he was looking at the most inexpensive way to protect them at some level so that he could buy time essentially until mm -hmm. he could until he could move on from or get back on his feet or whatever but my assuming of his position really damaged the value of what i was trying to sell yes and so again yeah that's it that's work i i want to make sure that people understand i'm not flip-flopping price did matter in that case but it understood because i didn't understand the inherent problem mm -hmm. that's where i failed Yes, and that's where that's where he, where he uh, he uh, wasn't on. He wasn't picking up what I was throwing down because I didn't know what he was throwing down. I see. And so when you have a when you have a great understanding of the person's problem, and it it can go all the way. And so one of the things that I think that people will, that when you're selling something, people get lost on, like, and your you know your listeners and viewers might have this issue too, is that. Oh, well, bear, like, my, my, my clients don't have problems. Like, I'm, I'm just, uh, I get this all the time. I'm just a lawn guy. I'm just a, I'm just, I'm just a maid. <laughs> and it frustrates me to no end to hear that. And it doesn't frustrate me in the sense that I get angry with them. I get angry with the fact that, and it's not even anger, it's just frustration, that they don't have the respect for themselves that I have for them. They've built, they built a successful business. Mm -hmm. We just talked about this a minute ago. You you have incredible confidence. Mm -hmm. You have incredible passion about what you do. Mm -hmm. You've built a successful business. You're looking for a solution to make it better. You're looking to better yourself. And then all what you're trying to tell me is that now um, you're just this. You're just that. Mm -hmm. And that is incredibly frustrating because you're not because I guarantee you your customers are your customers view you that way because you view yourself that way and your customers are also looking for you know with you know, this is kind of staring back to what we were talking about with processing credit cards don't want to get off on too much of a tangent here but no one of one of our topics we were going to talk about since we're talking about service autopilot everyone knows if they've watched my channel that i've been extremely interested in service autopilot it's, it's helped my business so much and another thing we we're going to come up with and this is something that's probably going to be a, a gold nugget for everybody is 
to some of these these buzzwords, some of these things that you right. hear that are, are complaints or issues mm -hmm. uh, that people are maybe worried about facing. And I definitely like to hit on that. And I think that leads us kind of right into that conversation. Yeah, bu buzzwords is something that's really huge. So like, like you hear a lot in business and you hear in a lot like if, if you're, you know, your viewers probably are consumers of a lot of other channels and listen to a lot of other podcasts and yeah. stuff to try to better themselves, better their business. That's exactly what this is about. You know, a buzzword that you hear quite a bit a lot of the time is accountability. And accountability is one of those one of those terms that gets thrown around a lot of bit. You have to hold yourself accountable. You have to hold your people accountable. Mm -hmm. It's one of those words that gets thrown out a lot, but rarely is it ever executed. Mm -hmm. And if it's ever executed, it's executed not very well. And if, But if you can there's going to be success that enough inevitably is on the other side of that. Yeah. And so, but the, the important thing, the, the, the problem with accountability is that you have to be honest mm -hmm. and honesty scares people, you know, exact, exactly what I was saying earlier about fitting a square peg into a round hole. You know, I have a, a great example of this and we, we have a, we have a mutual friend who's also a member um, of service autopilot that gave away Two hundred thousand dollars in business because it was just not in line with their mm -hmm. what they were doing anymore. Yeah. And he lost two hundred thousand dollars, and it made his business better. But he made it back in other areas where he could focus more and made a better made a better policy. The same thing goes here. I had an incredible opportunity to sell service autopilot to, to a very large company that mm -hmm. could have their 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 subscription with service autopilot would have made me look like a hero. Yeah. Except for what I saw down the line was a huge problem mm -hmm. from a supports perspective, from a training perspective, from from their execution perspective. They could, they were, they were gonna have to do, build in so many workarounds, they were gonna have to manipul manipulate the system in such a way, and they were at, in an industry that has like completely niche. Mm -hmm. And it's like, out, they applaud them for outside the box thinking of trying yes. to, again, try to fit a square peg in a hole. And they were thoroughly convinced. They were thoroughly convinced, even though I was yeah. telling yeah. them no. Yeah. I was telling them no. Mm -hmm. They were thoroughly convinced. And it took all of, I can tell you this, it took all of my sales ability to not sell them. Yes. To convince them not to do it. Yeah. It took every ounce of, of effort and way too much strength to... <laughs> Uh, frankly, to get them off the phone and and to continue to search for another possibility. But, that's a, and that's admirable because instead of you know sometimes in a situation like that, it would be so easy to, to just look at the dollar signs. To look at the dollar signs. Yeah. Look at especially in your position as a employee of the company, the upsides of commissions, the upside of everyone really seeing a huge a huge opportunity, a huge sale like that, and realizing that this is although all the numbers look great. The, the end game of this is bad for not just not just the customer, bad for the company, bad for everyone involved in this as it goes down the line. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and again, so this all goes back to the point of being honest, and when you're honest with not only yourself uh, and honest about your product, um, then then you, you it, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say no, and I think that that's a problem that so much, so many of us face, especially, uh, you know, from a sales perspective, you don't want to say no. Yes. You don't want to say no. You, cause you want to, at least from my perspective, it's not even, it, it's not even about greed. It's not even, it, it, and people are probably going to sit like, oh, this guy's completely full of it. He, he cares about the money. Yeah. I want to take care of my family. You're absolutely right. I want to, I want to make sure I get a paycheck. Yep. You're absolutely right. But at the end of the day, I also want to help people. And that's why I got into insurance in the first place, but that's why I transitioned over to Service Autopilot, was I found a unique opportunity to help small business owners. When I was selling insurance, I found I found a niche mm -hmm. that I was helping small, because nobody in my office figured out how to sell small business insurance because it was just too difficult. There's too many ins and outs. And, yeah. and what I found was like, all it took was a conversation and deeper diving. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the flip side of it, the reward for me was a lot was a lot greater, mm -hmm. and so I invested in small business owners, and I found that I, I found that I found love with small business ownership. That was awesome, and that's why I transitioned over to Service Autopilot was because I found an opportunity to help them. So inevitably, that's what I want to do is I want to help everybody out there that owns a small business, and and you know my enthusiasm can kind of get the best of me. I remember I kind of reflect 
kind of fondly on my opening, my interview into the, into the company. And mm -hmm. I just had these wild ideas about how I thought service autopilot could be applied. Frankly, I don't know why they hired me. <laughs> Cause it's just there, like, like, I mean, we're talking about fitting square pegs and around holes. I'll be yeah. like, service autopilot can work for this and that. I really see it going places and doing this. Yeah. And we're definitely going places, but not anywhere near what I was thinking. I mean, I, uh, and I wasn't, and it was just, it was obviously ignorance at that point, but it was, but I think they, it's easy to get carried. Away. I think it's they, easy. I think they th saw my enthusiasm and that was probably the winning, the winning ticket. They're like, well, at least we could probably rein him in. <laughs> you can, you know, looking for employees, you can, you can train a lot of things, but you can't train attitude. So that's probably where you got them right there. I think so. Um, and, and nevertheless, I'm, I'm here and, uh, much like my wife, I, I tricked him into committing to me. So, <laughs> Well, there was one other thing, and I'm kind of writing some of these notes, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting my thoughts together as we're going. We were talking about buzzwords, um, and then I also said, you know, some of, the, some of the pushback, since we're talking about sales, and now we're getting back into the, the conversation of service autopilot as well, what are some of those things that you get pushback on? Uh, those, those things that always come up, because I'd like to kind of share my thoughts and, he, and hear what you're hearing a lot from from people looking for a solution. Well, I, I think that uh, I think that you, again, this is something that you know we're talking about with pricing and stuff. But I think you get pushback on everything too, mm -hmm. um, because when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of education levels, all sorts of um, of insight, and um, it, it, inevitably you're going to run across the people of uh, that have uh, a general understanding mm -hmm. uh, of what they want accomplished and so they they want to tell you how inevitably how you want to do your job mm -hmm. and so that's the, probably the biggest pushback um that is the most difficult to deal with the pricing is easy but the most difficult is the pushback of telling me how uh how the product should function yeah or how they need the product to function in order for them to make the decision again that goes back to transparency right about being like and just being honest and upfront with them, um, and it's really easy for me to it's really easy for me to 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 uh, to handle the pushback on on how the the product should function because it, it solved by two easy things. One, the fact, listen, man, you're talking to the wrong guy. I'm a sales guy. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't, know how to, I, don't I don't develop this. I don't know how to build it. I just know how to use it, and I know it works. Yeah. Um, the second thing is is that is this very simple question of, again, turning it back on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want, it, you, want this, you want the solution to solve this particular problem this particular way, how are you solving it currently? Mm -hmm. How is it being solved currently? And how well is that and, working And out? how's that working out for you? Yeah. Yeah? So the, uh, you know, the comparison that we can kind of draw in, in your world is like, well, I think I, I want the I want the pergola to be built this way, and there's no physics just doesn't allow it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's an easy that's an easy turnaround on that. Be like, uh, it can't be done. Well, what, what do you mean it can't be done? Well, it's physically not possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I want it to be done. Well, again, it's physically not possible. So finding alternatives to the solution or just flat not doing it at all. Yes. And so the the idea is to turn it back on in helping them realize not again this isn't about turning it back on them and making them realize that they're stupid no because they're not they have they have certain needs and so the customer when the customer always has needs you have to you have to fulfill that need one way or another and if you can get them to understand and to realize like it's just it's either simply out of the realm of possibility to the degree of it's, it's incredibly difficult mm -hmm. Or you know what, flat out, you know what, I, this could be done. It is out of the realm of my expertise. It is outside of the realm of what I'm comfortable doing. Yeah. Let me refer someone who can. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to build the network too, and of understanding of what you're talking about when you're talking to different people and everything. So most definitely, most definitely. Well, this is fantastic. I love getting to spend some time, see how you think, see how you operate in your role talk about a little bit of these things you get pushed back from or the different things that go on and, and really seeing how you handle there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for someone that is not just trying to push everyone into something just for the sale 
Yeah. That is trying to make sure that this fits for them and that's going to better their business because that that bettering their business and having a software like this could also change your life because a lot of yeah. you know a lot of entrepreneurs are a reflection of their business and their business is a reflection of them. So yeah. Bear, it was great talking to you today. Thanks so much. I appreciate. It. Let's go grab a cigar. Yeah. What a great show, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to listen to Bear and talk about sales and some of the stuff he's involved in. Also, apologize for the voice. Uh, I've been having a sore throat and I've been losing it the whole weekend. It's It's been a real challenge to keep going. Um, but this is really cool to sit down and speak with someone in service autopilot that handles the sales, see their sales approach, how they're not forcing stuff that people don't need and, and talk about kind of the solution, some of the things they hear, some of the things they see. Just some really cool info from a guy who's been doing sales for a long time. I really hope you enjoyed this show. Guys, follow me on Facebook. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Hit like if you loved it. Leave a big thumbs down if you hated it. Comment, let me know what you thought. I'll see y'all soon. Have a great day.